A.T. Robertson calls this epistle a bugle blast of freedom. Scholars may debate whether the letter was sent to North or South Galatia and disagree about the date of its writing, but no one should mistake Paul's message. The letter is unusual in that it's written not to an individual like Timothy, Titus, or Philemon, or to a local assembly like Corinthians, Philippians, or Colossians, but to a group of churches in the region once known as Asia Minor, now in the land of Turkey. It's also different from Paul's other letters because he usually begins with an encouraging look at the believer's position in Christ. He's generally slow to what we call the point. Having read the first chapters of Philippians or Colossians, we might think, what an ideal church. But Paul then turns from their position in Christ to their present condition and the need to be conformed more into his image. Most of the first century saints, we discover, pretty much struggled with the same problems we do. But Galatians has no gentle beginning. Paul immediately launches into his concern for them. He presents his twofold theme in chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, the grace of Christ and the gospel of Christ. To Paul, you couldn't have one without the other. The grace of Christ was the oxygen that gave life to the gospel. A dangerous heresy was gaining strength in the church, imported from Jerusalem. They were claiming that salvation required both faith in Christ and the keeping of the law. Paul's rebuttal in Galatians is crystal clear. It seemed that in order to push their perverted gospel, these Judaizers found it necessary to undermine Paul's influence among the Christians. But he shows that in Galatians chapter 1 and 2, that number one, his gospel came directly from heaven, from Christ himself. Two, that the other apostles in Jerusalem were in perfect agreement with the gospel that he preached. And three, that when Peter linked himself with some of these Judaizers, Paul stood up to him, and the Christians agreed that Peter's position was wrong and Paul's was right. The epistle has a simple three-part outline. Chapters 1 and 2 present Christian experience as authenticating salvation by grace alone. Chapters 3 and 4 present Christian doctrine as requiring salvation by grace alone. And chapters 5 and 6 present Christian character as the fruit of salvation by grace alone. Although Paul's very straight with the believers, this epistle has some of the sweetest statements in the Bible. Chapter 2 and 20 has given many the secret of victory. The description of the fruit of the Spirit should inspire us to daily abide in Christ. And we with Paul can revel in the wonder that the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. And that's a scripture snapshot of the book of Galatians.